I'll show you how to turn any wired headphones into a wireless connection. It's super easy and pretty cheap and I'm going to be showing you all the steps that I took so let's go. A few years ago I wanted to convert my cheapo wired headphones to wireless for when I was riding my e-bike. This was super easy to do thanks to a product called the Blue Ant Ribbon. This was about 15 bucks when I picked it up but you can get it even cheaper now. It's a little Bluetooth module, it has an audio jack and a tiny little battery and it allow you to plug in any headphones and convert them to Bluetooth wireless. I just wrapped the existing cable around the headband and then plugged it in and zip tied it all into place. It requires no solder no skills. If you can zip tie something, you can do this mod. If you want to convert to wireless, this is the easiest way to do it. It'll work with any audio device, speakers, headphone, earbuds. Speaking of earbuds, this mod is going to be on over the ear headphones because I'm a skeleton and I can't wear earbuds because I have no ears. I know people love earbuds, so don't worry, this mod will still apply to you. These are my Bayer Dynamic DT880 Pros and they're pretty expensive. I already already have them and I just want them to be wireless. Of course you can already buy ready-made pre-made wireless components, headphones, keyboards, all that stuff. It goes without saying but I'm going to say it to you anyway because you guys must have missed it on my last conversion video. If you don't want a DIY tutorial then why are you clicking on this video? Please just go buy some wireless thing that's already made. If you're in a similar situation or you just like to tinker and build things then this video is for you. But if you're gonna leave me a silly comment like why would I want to go through all this trouble when I could just buy something cheap that already works then one you've missed the entire point of this video and two you should go do that and not click on a video which is a DIY tutorial. In my wireless keyboard video I didn't want to take up any time of the video to explain all that because I thought it was self-explanatory, obvious, and common sense but apparently that wasn't the case. So this is for those people. This is your warning. This is your disclaimer. If you just want to buy something and you don't like building stuff, then go do that, please. Okay, with that out of the way, can we build some stuff? Yes, let's do it. Because these headphones are super chonkers, I figured I could get away with an equally large wireless module. This one I got on AliExpress for about 10 bucks, but it does come with a built-in amplifier. You can get some with a built-in battery holder, even some for less than a dollar. There is a multitude of these little PCBs, but they all essentially do the same thing which is take your audio input and turn it into a Bluetooth transmission. Because of all the ports on the board, soldering is not required, but you are required to provide a power source. You can use a power bank, batteries, a USB port, anything that's going to provide 5 volts. Just plug it in, then plug in your audio source, connect the Bluetooth, and then start streaming audio. As for the basics, that's pretty much it. Just plug in some power, give it some audio, and start listening. I am certain that anyone could do this. I did encounter one cat caveat I wanted to point out and that is on certain power banks that are more sophisticated the Bluetooth wasn't drawing enough power so there was an auto shut off that only happened on some of the power banks. On this cheaper power bank it worked flawlessly so just something to look out for. I thought this might be the problem because when this is paused it draws almost zero power and also when it's running it doesn't use much power at all either. It has all the normal Bluetooth controls you can previous and next from the module and you can also pause and play as shown here. Because I like to be different, I decided to build my own battery package to stick on my headphones. These are just some 18650 cells that I pulled from a dead laptop battery. I found the two most closely matched cells by checking their voltages. The cells may be too dead to push a laptop, but they are more than up to the task for this tiny little PCB. These cells already had tabs spot welded onto them and I'm going to repurpose them so I can wire them more easily in parallel. This is probably overkill, but I figured I could go a very long time without having to recharge. When wiring two cells in parallel, you're basically doubling the capacity and not adding any more voltage. To make it a little easier to solder these tabs, I'm just temporarily taping the cells together. 
Because these cells are only putting out about 3.8 volts, I do need some sort of boost converter to up the voltage to the required 5 volts. To aid in that, I'm soldering in this tiny little charge circuit that I pulled from a defective power bank. Not only is this going to boost the voltage up to 5 volts, which I need, it's also going to provide a way to safely charge the batteries. I wasn't quite sure of the output polarity, so here's one way to test for that with a multimeter. Set your multimeter to voltage, and if you see a minus sign when you connect the leads that means they're backwards so switch them and that minus sign should go away as shown here. After I know what is what I'll then label these so I don't forget later on and after that I just have to solder the leads from the battery to the charging circuit. Because this particular charge circuit has an integrated LED flashlight, I was able to verify I was getting power from the batteries. And then from a wall outlet, I charged up the batteries. To make the pack look a little bit more interesting, I covered the cells with some gold tape. I designed and laser cut this mount that I'm going to put all the components on one package. I made some provisions for some zip ties and that's primarily what I'm going to use to hold everything together. You could use a 3D printed enclosure, you could use some tape, some zip ties, pretty much anything that will hold the components to your headphones. Because this is just an experiment at this point, I didn't want to go ahead and cut the very long audio cable coming from my headphones. If this works out, I probably will trim them shorter instead of wrapping them all around Around the headband. Because I want this PCB to sit flatter, I'm removing the speaker wire receptacles because I'm not going to be attaching any external speakers. Which is a cool feature of this particular board because you could add speakers to make your own boom box. I knew these leads were going to be a bit long and I left them that way for my testing but now that I know where everything's going to sit I can make them a lot shorter. Once I have those wires taken care of I only need to add two more wires and that's from the output of the charge circuit into the input of the Bluetooth module. And once I'm done with that, the only thing left to do is just affix the whole package to the headband of the headphones with some zip ties. And here's what it looks like completed. It's definitely chonky. It is a little bit heavy, but it's not too bad. I know the wrap cable does look uncomfortable, but it's actually not that bad either. But after more testing, if this does work out, I will be trimming that cable down so it's a very short length. And I'm sure you're wondering, how does it work out? Does it actually work? Is it worth doing this? Granted, I've only had a few hours of use so far, but it actually works surprisingly well. Even with the added weight of the batteries and the cumbersome 
some coiling of the cable around the headband. These are some of the most comfortable headphones and even with these modifications it's still comfortable to wear after hours of use. I do have a pretty good external sound card on my PC and I would say that this setup actually sounds better. I don't know if it's the extra amplifier on the module itself or if there's some sort of tuning with the bass but I would say in A-B test this sounds the same if not better with this modification. The wireless connection is very strong, I didn't have any types of loss of connection or anything like that. Because of how little power this module actually uses, I would probably opt to go with a smaller battery or just a single battery. I would recommend this project to anyone who's curious in trying it out because it is very easy and I've laid out a bunch of different ways that you can do it from super easy just plugging everything in to soldering and doing something more custom like this. And if you already had a a lot of the parts laying around like I did all you really have to do is buy the module and you can get those for a couple bucks. I want to thank you guys so much for watching the video all the way to the end I really appreciate it. I have a ton more projects for you guys in the works so stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.